But devotees, true devotees, never boast about their ecstatic love for Krishna. They always present themselves as very fallen. So he said to the king, actually, I have a disease that's something like epilepsy. And I went into a fit and fell down. But because of his association with a great devotee like Mukunda, even a Mughal king could understand that actually he was an ecstatic love for Krishna by seeing the peacock feather. Lord Chaitanya said about his devotee, even though he appears to be a very ordinary householder with a family and children performing his occupation, to an ordinary person, he seems like a very ordinary man doing the same things everyone else does. But in his heart, Everything he does is an offering of love to Krishna. He's constantly remembering Krishna. Always chanting Krishna's holy names. Lord Chaitanya, he said to the three, he said, Mukunda, I give you the instruction to sincerely earn both material and spiritual wealth. Remain a householder. Remain in your occupation. Remain <clears throat> with your family, but always be absorbed in earning spiritual and material wealth through bhakti. Then he turned to Narahari Sadakar, his younger brother. And he said, you should remain here in Puri with me and remain with devotees and help to spread the preaching. And Raghunandan, the son, he said, you should worship the deity in the temple. In this way, Lord Chaitanya taught that even the, though these Three different types of services are so altogether different, they are actually absolutely one and the same. Because the Lord is Bhava Grahi. He sees the spirit of devotion. Whether one is a pujari in the temple, one is living in, or a brahmachari living in the ashram and preaching, or a grihasta living at home with an occupation, it's not that one is better than another. Where there is devotion, there is equal. Grihe tako vane tako sadahari bole tako suke duke pulo nako badane hari nam korore gai gora madhu sware. This is Mahaprabhu's message. Whether you're a grihasta like a mukunda or whether you're a sannyasi living in the forest. If we take the name of Krishna with devotion, we will be free from all the happiness and all the distress of this material existence. Because we will paramdrasvanivartite experience the higher taste of Krishna. There's a beautiful story of Raghunandan. When he was just a small boy, he was hardly five years old. His father had just given him the sacred Brahminical thread and was teaching him, gradually teaching him about how to worship their family deity, whose name was Gopinath. Now one day, Mukunda, he was called, perhaps by the king, for some work. So he had to leave. Now every day, very, very, Strictly, with great devotion, Mukunda would, perf would offer the Rajbog offering that his wife would cook, and then he would perform the arti. But on this day, he had to leave. So he told Raghunandan, your mother will cook, and you should offer the bhoga to Gopinath. No, 
Raghunandan really didn't know how to do it. He didn't know all the yantras and mantras and tantras and mudras and pujas. He was just a little boy. But his father had faith in his devotion, and that's what Krishna wants. So the mother made a beautiful tali and with, with sabjis and sweets and rice with ghee and gave it to Raghunandan and said, now my son, offer this to Gopinath. So Gopinath set it on the altar. And he didn't know the mantras or the tantras or the yantras or the mujas or the pujas. <laughs> so he just looked up at Gopinath and said, eat, eat. <laughs> so Gopinath ate. How does the deity eat? We learn from Brahma Samhita that all of the Lord's limbs can perform the functions of all the other limbs. So just by his glancing at the food, he's tasting the love and devotion that was put into that food. And when he tastes your bhava, your love, then that food becomes spiritually surcharged with his grace and it's prasad, maha prasad. So little Raghunandan, he again, he said, eat, eat. And the food was still there. Then he began to cry. The little boys on the altar weeping, crying tears, saying, my Lord, my, I'm, my father's going to punish me <laughs> because he told me to feed you and you're not eating what I'm taking. So he's not going to be happy with me. Am I so fallen? Am I, am I so unqualified that you won't accept my offering? And then Krishna, just seeing the innocent devotion of this child, Gopinath the Murti spoke. He said, I already ate. <laughs> Raghunath said, I don't see that you ate. Everything's on the plate. He said, no, I glanced and I accepted your love and devotion. And Raghunath said, I don't know all this high philosophy about, <laughs> about glance. The food is here. Please eat. And again he started crying. So Gopinath came down from his position, sat in front of the plate, and ate every morsel. Now this was taking a long time. And Raghunandan's mother was outside the doors thinking, what is my son doing in there so long? <laughs> and then he came out, and she came to take the Mahaprasad. <laughs> but she saw the plate was empty. <laughs> now, you mothers are laughing, but if your son, five-year-old son, came off the altar with an empty plate, what would you think? <laughs> she was thinking just like that. She said, where's all, the, where's all the prasad? And Raghunandan said, Gopinath ate it. <laughs> she said, you, did you eat it? He said, no, I didn't. Eat. Gopinath doesn't eat like that. You must have eaten it. He, so he started to cry. No, I didn't eat it. Gopinath ate it. So Mukunda, after a hard day's work, comes home and says to his wife, please give me prasad. She said, there is no prasad. <laughs> what is this, there is no prasad? <laughs> and she told him the story that Raghunandan went in the altar and he was in there for a really long time and then he came out and said, Gopinath ate everything. <laughs> so he asked his son and his son told him everything that happened. At first he didn't eat, but then I cried and he came down and ate. So Mukunda understood that his son was special. He said, make another offering to Gopinath I, because I have to go out again. So he gave him a ladu and said, offer this ladu to Gopinatha because I have to go. So he went out the door and left 
And then as soon as Raghunandan turned around, Mukunda turned around secretly, and from a hiding place he was watching on the altar what was happening. And little Raghunandan went on the altar, took the ladu, didn't put it on, he took it off the plate and put it right in Gopinath's hand. <laughs> His father's watching. This is not what he taught him. <laughs> he taught him Seva Puja according to the Archana Padahati. And then, go, and then little Raghunandan said, Gopinath, eat, eat this ladu. It's very good, eat this ladu. <laughs> Uh, Gopinath didn't want to see his little devotee cry anymore, so he just he put his hand to his mouth and took a big bite out of the ladu. And Mukunda Sarakar is watching this. And he just went, ah. <laughs> he made a sound of astonishment. And when Raghunandan heard it, he looked and saw his father. And then Gopinath saw the father and put the, <laughs> put the ladu... <laughs> moved his hand away. <laughs> and to this day, if you go to Sri Kanda through the Gopinath temple, half of the ladu is still there giving darshan to testify that the Supreme Personality of Godhead accepts whatever is offered with love and devotion. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu turned to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and his brother Vidya Vachaspati. And he said that the Supreme Lord has incarnated in two forms in this stage. He has come as wood and he has come as water. And here Srila Prabhupada explains that everything is emanating from Krishna. Aham saravasya prabhavo mata saravam prabhartate iti matva pajante mam buddha bhava samandita. I am the source of all material worlds and spiritual worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my loving devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Now, this is Krishna's. In, this is Krishna's definition of wisdom. We hear about wise man, and everybody has different ideas of what it means to be wise. But Krishna says, this is wisdom. To understand that he is the source of everything, and everything is emanating from him. And therefore, to worship him with all our hearts, with love and devotion. That means this material energy is Krishna's energy. And Krishna is present in his energy. Krishna is present in and between every atom. The impersonalist philosophers, they call this material existence an illusion. And their idea of tyaga, or renunciation, is to give up all of these things. The karmi people, materialists, they boga, they want to enjoy Krishna's energy. The impersonalists, they want to reject Krishna's energy. But a devotee sees that everything is for Krishna's pleasure even all the temporary phenomena of this material existence, including this body. This body is a temple of the Lord. The Lord is seated within this body. So how? Prapanchakatiya buddhya harisham bandhivashtuna. Rupa Goswami explains, incomplete renunciation is to renounce something thinking it's material. But complete renunciation means to use everything in the service of Thakurji, Sri Krishna. And Krishna 
since everything is non-different than him, although he remains the source of everything, like the sun is the source of the sunlight, which pervades everything. Krishna, by his own free will, could make himself present to his devotee anywhere and in anything, even material elements. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained that Lord Jagannath in Puri is Krishna, full-fledged Krishna, with all of his six opulences, performing his divine leelas in a way that we can see him, fix our mind on him, and render service to him in the form of Lord Jagannath. And he said, and Krishna has personally appeared in the form of water as Mother Ganges. She is absolutely non-different from Krishna. And she's come to purify our sins. And for those who approach her with the proper person, purpose, Ganga has come to bestow unalloyed loving devotional service to the, to the, to the Supreme Lord. And then he told Sarvabhama Patacharya, your life's mission should be to serve Lord Jagannath, Krishna in the form of wood. And your brother Vidya Vachaspati, your, your mission in life should be to go back to Navadweep and worship and serve Mother Ganga. We will read today's verse. In the bright fortnight of the month of Palgun, for 12 days ending with Dwadasi, one should observe the vow of subsisting only on milk and should worship the lotus-eyed supreme personality of Godhead with devotion. Krishna, seek the devotion in the heart of his devotee. Krishna would wake up early in the morning with his friends to the gopis' houses to steal their butter. It wasn't just mischief because the gopis would churn that butter every state when they would milk their cows, when they would feed their cows grass, when they would Every stage of making that butter was with pure love, hoping that Krishna would come to taste it. And Krishna reciprocates. He was going house to house, stealing the butter because he was hungry for the butter. Hungry for love. Virat Rupa, we saw what his mouths were doing. <laughs> Devouring all the greatest kshatriyas on earth. But that was a different situation. That same absolute truth in his original form, the source of all avatars, avatari, is roaming from place to place, searching for the love of his devotee. And the Lord descends into this world to search for the lost souls. And gives us, by his instructions, by his grace, the means to revive that love because Krishna is hungry for our love. There's nothing that will satisfy Krishna except bhakti. And there, will not, there is nothing that can satisfy the heart of any living entity except bhakti. Because it's the only reality that connects us to the ultimate object of our love, Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world searching everywhere for everyone. We were discussing last night, it was the appearance day of Balabhacharya. 
Sripad Balabacharya, this great avatar, he traveled throughout the length and breadth of India. He just wore unstitched clothing, one set. There are 84 baitaks, or places where he sat and spoke the message of pure bhakti to the world. Searching, searching, searching for the lost souls to bring them back to Krishna. And our beloved Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, how he searched for the lost souls to awaken that love and bring them back home, back to Krishna. On Krishna's behalf, he traveled around the world 12 times on behalf of Krishna. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. Krishna comes to this world again and again and again, hungry for our love, knowing that until we offer him our love, there is only suffering. There could be no satisfaction. And in this age, the Lord has given such a dispensation. Just be humble. Just develop a genuine and sincere attitude to serve others without selfishness, to serve God and be compassionate to others. And with that spirit, I will awaken that love within your heart when you cry out with all sincerity, my holy name. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>